Uh, I'm Felipe Hoffa, uh, I'm from Google. Uh, today's topic is exploring the notability gender gap. Thank you for coming here. We are going to see a lot of numbers, a lot of interesting facts. Um, I'm here with Eva Gasperovic. Uh, she works at Google with me. I work in San Francisco. She works in London. I'm very happy to have this opportunity to be here. If it wasn't for conference, I wouldn't see Eva that much. And let me get started with this. This was our presentation, who we are. And before we even start, uh, remember to write this code down, the A, because with this code you can get a $500 credit, or that's almost 500 euros, but not that much, to use the Google Cloud Platform. Everything you learn today, you are able, you will, you are able to do it at home. Uh, there is a quota to do it for free, but you can do even more with this $500. Now, just to start with this topic, why do we care about the gender gap? What is happening around the world? Why do we care about understanding these things? Uh, you must, must all know that there is imbalance in the world. We can see it here at the conference. We can see it our, at our workplaces. And one thing is anecdotal data, but we can also go to factual data. We can research, and we can go further from our space and look around the world, look around different professions. And sometimes there are questions that are not easy to answer. Look at this one, for example. Who are the most visited female politicians on Wikipedia? Any guess? Merkel? That, that's one guess. Any other guess? Thatcher, yes. That, that's close to the most visited one. Uh, in, hmm? Who? Dima. <laughs> okay. Well, um, all these guesses are very interesting. You are close to the truth. But there is even a more fundamental question. That is, how would you even know? How, where would you get the data? How would you process this? And today we're going to, need to talk about that. Now, the answer to this question is the most visited female politician is Elizabeth I. Of course, Gandhi's are there, Margaret Thatcher, Clinton, etc. Tilly Templer, she's a politician now. Yes. And this data, I got it from the Wikipedia logs in August 2013. But it's not enough having the Wikipedia logs. You can have the page views but you still need to ask him somehow who are these women. To have a more complicated question, uh, let's talk about books. What are the most visited books on Wikipedia that were written by a female uh, before 2010? Any guess? Harry Potter, that's a good one. Let's see the list. The first one in February was Pride and Prejudice. Uh, Harry Potter is not in this list. I wonder why, but I will research that. How do I do this? With a simple query. It doesn't look very easy, but we are going to go deeper now in how this works, how you can do the same, and what does ev everything here mean. So who, what, why? First, we're going to talk about this. We are going to introduce Freebase, that is a massive data set with a lot of knowledge. How to query Freebase with BigQuery, my favorite Google tool. And at the end, we are going to visualize everything in, in the map. Um, as I was uh, as any time that you have to work with big data or small data, with any data, you always need a data source. You need to process this data somehow. And once the data is processed, uh, you need a way to visualize it. So the products we are using today, uh, anyone is familiar here with Freebase? Yes, one hand for Freebase. <laughs> you, might, you might have been using Freebase without noticing it, but we'll learn more about this in a minute. BigQuery, who knows what BigQuery is? Excellent, I like the BigQuery side. Uh, <laughs> who has used BigQuery? Okay. Okay, well. Excellent. In 40 minutes more, you will all know what, we pick, what BigQuery is, and hopefully you will try it out. And someone has used Google Maps? 
<laughs> yes, <laughs> excellent. Someone has done maps with Google Maps. Interesting. Yes, we can do maps. There is it has a very nice API, so we can do stuff with it. We are going to talk about the gender gap. That's diversity. I don't know if someone wants to know my, our solution to the gender gap. If you came here looking for the solutions, I'm sorry to disappoint you because we are going to do this talk fact-based. We are going to research the data. We are going to look at what the current scenario is. But we didn't bring any solutions. That said, at Google, we care a lot. So if you also care a lot, uh, check google.com slash diversity. There are a lot of resources. There are a lot of projects we are doing around this topic, and we really care. Why? First, for me, because exploring a data set is fun. Whenever I find an interesting data set, I try to explore as much as I can, look what interesting data I can get. This is a very important message I want you to remember. We are going to see a lot of numbers today, a lot of interesting visualizations. Please don't trust any of them. Uh, it's not because they are not good. I like them. I trust what I'm saying. But whenever you get a number, don't stop there. Don't accept aggregated data. Uh, we are now able to get raw data and repeat every process. So why accept data that everyone, anyone else might tell you? Like, uh, you know, 70% of women are. Don't accept that fact until you are able to reproduce it. Reproduce it. Go get to the raw data. Ask for raw data, demand raw data. So that said, we are going to meet BigQuery, a tool, and the data set where we can get all the data. You will see me making many assumptions to get to the visualizations. Maybe my assumptions are wrong. Please ask questions, uh, repeat the procedures, and act on what you see. If I'm wrong at, in something, you will be able to reproduce that. Now. The data source is Freebase. It's a massive data set. And I'm very lucky to have here Eva that can explain Freebase much better than me. Uh, hi, my name is Eva. This feels weird to talk to the microphone without having the effect of it. Uh, I'm a developer relations engineer based in London. And I deal with, with knowledge. So not many of you heard about Freebase, right? So maybe I ask my question slightly differently. How many of you have seen knowledge pan panels in the search results? Knowledge panel is this piece of information that comes next to the, uh, next to the search results. Well, this is kind of free base. The story is like this. Uh, Google wants to provide a lot of information to users in a very fast way. For example, in a form of aggregated knowledge panels like this. In order to be able to do that, we need a big data structure that allows us to combine, find, and filter this kind of facts very quickly. It's called knowledge graph. This knowledge graph has a lot, a lot of facts about real world entities, like people, places, countries, and so on. Luckily enough for all of us developers, the part of that knowledge graph is publicly available as Freebase. Freebase is open. It's licensed by Creative Commons license, and everybody is uh, welcome to contribute to it, but also to use it. You can use it either via interactive API, but also as data dumps, which pretty much means you can go download uh, over 22 gigs of knowledge graph to your drive and then query it and learn more about the world. During this talk, we'll be using this particular data source in order to learn something about the gender situation in the world. Um, it's very big. It has over 40 million of facts. For, a, for comparison, English Wikipedia has around 4 million of facts. So it's around 10 times bigger. And it's quite important to understand how those facts are represented in this data source so that later on uh, Felipe can show you how to process them in BigQuery. The, the facts in Freebase, it's a graph database. How many of you know uh, graph databases or RDF? Oh, quite a lot of people, awesome. Yeah, so just to quickly recap for people not familiar with it, uh, every file can be represented as an RDF triple. It's called triple because it consists 
of three, uh, three parts. Every fact has a subject, a predicate, and an object. For example, in this picture, uh, the very central piece is a Daft Punk band. How many of you know Daft Punk? Yay, right? So uh, this, this triple says that Daft Punk appeared in the movie Tron, right? So in this case, the Daft Punk is our subject, appears is a predicate, which is the relationship between two objects, and Tron is the object. Daft Punk appears in Tron, a nice example of a triple. Of course, in a machine-readable world, uh, machines like to have it more standardized uh, than uh, freeform strings. So usually objects will be given IDs. In, uh, in Freebase, they usually look like m slash something. So the first ID is an ID of Daft Punk. The last ID is the ID of the Movitron. And then the predicate between them is written using the, the Freebase schema. If you know the Freebase schema, you can pretty much query this graph for a lot of different facts. When it comes to quality, Google really cares about uh, publishing only high quality data. But on the other hand, Freebase is open. Like a lot of people are contributing to Freebase and we use data sources like Wikipedia, IMDB and other sources on the internet. Our standards say that at least 99% of new facts added to Freebase need to be reconciled with the previous facts, which means like you cannot add contradicting facts. Uh, it all should be coherent internally. And only 1% can be duplicated or conflated topics. Of course, there are sometimes factual errors. For example, Shirley Temple is a politician, right? Uh, errors happen, but the factual, uh, factual errors like date of birth and so on can be fixed quite easily by, by bots and by, um, and by uh, human reviewers. So uh, the quality of this data source is, is really high. In Freebase, there are facts about a lot of different topics from different areas uh, of life. Uh, and in this talk, we'll, um, we'll focus particularly on professions and on the gender-related topics. And now Felipe will show you how to take this data source, the, this triple data store, and process it using BigQuery to draw some conclusions about the gender situation in the world. Thank you, Eva. So now you all know what uh, Freebase is, it's this massive data set. And I want to query it. Let's write some queries. Let's process this data. But before doing that, let me introduce you to what BigQuery is. BigQuery is an analytical database in the cloud. So it's a database. Uh, it's specifically used for analyzing a lot of lots of data. And as it's in the cloud, it's hosted by Google. Uh, you don't need to care about any of the implementation details. Um, it understands S SQL. So you already know how to query it. Everybody knows SQL? Almost everybody? Yes. Um, it's impressive when you get to analyze a terabyte of data in 15 seconds, doing regular expression with it, grouping, adding data. Um, I'm sure you have tried similar things in your own databases, and they have taken hours or days. Here you are able to do it in seconds. Um, you can import your own data, JSON, CSVs. Uh, you can stream data in. Uh, recently, we uh, moved the limit of how much data you can stream in to 100,000 rows per second. That should cover a lot of use cases. I like your impressive face. It's like, <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, prices, there are only two prices you have to care about. Normally, with any database, you have to turn on the database for so many hours, which asks me, uh, how many CPUs, RAM. Forget about all of that. You have only to care about what's your data and what questions you want to ask from it. And the prices went down a couple of weeks ago, like 85% less than before. So there are very few excuses not to try it. And you have a free quota too. And it has a REST API. Today we're going to be running SQL queries by themselves. But if you know R, R, Pandas, Tableau, Tableau, one, uh, you can connect it to BigQuery because they are all finding that using BigQuery as a big data backend is one of the best alternatives they have. They just drop their data there, 
the, you can put your data in BigQuery and it's ready to be used. So who knows here what BigQuery is? Come on, I just told you. <laughs> okay, maybe I should say this in Italian. <laughs> yes, okay, io non parlo italiano, ma io intento. Okay, so you have to load your data, you can query it, and you can output it. A question I normally get is how to load data into BigQuery, so let me show you really fast how to do that. In this case, I want to load the data from, oh, don't read my email. Um, I want to load the data, I was talking about the Wikipedia page views, I don't know, do you know where to get those? Let me show you very fast, Wikipedia page views. Uh, the right place to find it is in Google, because the first <laughs> article is, <laughs> yeah, so this guy aggregates a lot of data, but he links to the raw data here, and I want to see what is happening now in April 2014, what is happening April 12th at 2 p.m., that's basically now, this is UTC time, so I can copy this file. Let me double get this file. Um, basically, I'm getting here what happened in the last hour in Wikipedia. It's a 100 megabyte file of compressed data. It's in the form, it has uh, what Wikipedia you are looking at. Okay, the file is here, let me start loading it. I tried this before, but with not so fresh data. Let me change. Let me, I just like using the freshest data possible. No one else has this data. Because it's as fresh as possible. And I was loading. Um, basically telling it, load this file in a table name like this. These are my columns, the language of the Wikipedia. You know that you have Wikipedia in many languages. The title of the web page, how many requests that page has in the last hour, and how big the content is. And these are a couple of options. Uh, it's not a CSV, it's a space separated uh, file, and it uses no quote characters. And that's it. Let's forget about it for a minute and continue with the presentation. That's all you need to know to load data into BigQuery. I did the same with Freebase. Freebase is a much bigger file. How big is it? 22 gigabytes. I loaded it. Uh, it's an, in an RDF format. Uh, BigQuery reads CSV, so I had to transform it first. And once I had it into BigQuery, I could run this simple query. Uh, give me a count start of every triple in this database. And BigQuery answer is, Two billion facts. Two billion rows of triples, the triples that you just explained us, uh, that you must know because you already know RDF. Um, and from these two billion facts, I want to know how many says this subject is a person. I have two billion rows. I, with this simple count, I can get that there are three million people described in Freebase. It's an interesting number. I want to know more about these people, uh, so I can ask Freebase, uh, what do you know about people, about these three million? And I get these interesting predicates. These are the top 20 predicates. And for the three million people, I have six, mi six million names. Some people have more than one name, uh, depends on the language. I have the gender for two million of them. So part of the reason I'm interested in this topic is because now I have a lot of data on gender. I can also get their profession or their date of birth. Let's play with that, that data. Gender. Um, here I'm counting from the two million people with gender, how many males and how many females I have. Any guess on which is which? Uh, yes, Freebase has three genders, uh, male, female, and other. <laughs> It's a, it's a uh, we, it might be strange for some, but it's a fact that we have to accept. Uh, there is part of diversity is knowing that there are more than two genders in the world. And 
we have here the three, we can see that there is a big difference. Uh, the, the number of males is three times the number of females. Why? Well, let's go deeper. Before going deeper, instead, I want to do this step. Instead of querying every time a 22 gigabyte file, I will extract uh, all the data to new tables. With this SQL, I'm extracting all the people names. I take its triple, I see for person, I look for persons, I extract the predicate name, and I want the name in English, as some people have more than one name in other languages. I can do the same thing with date of birth. When was each one born? And to make my life simpler, I will transform date of birth in ages. So instead of looking at eight on day by day data, I can look I group them by year by year. Okay, before I show you that graph, <laughs> I, I like making people guess. Which is the most popular age in Freebase? 40? 20? It's getting closer. Who wants a t shirt? 18? Older. <laughs> Younger. 28, so close. 26. Okay, you, you, whoever said 26? No, no one said 26? Okay, but I have t shirts and stickers for everyone. Well, I have only three t-shirts, I have a lot of stickers. <laughs> this is the distribution of ages in Wikipedia. The peak age is 26, so you were very close. Even, and we can see that before people are 18 years old, there are not many. Then we have a big peak, and then it goes down. Something interesting while looking at this computing these ages, I got some negative numbers. So I have 24 people with less than, yeah, that can be. Why can this be? Uh, well, as I told you before, it's a live data and live data set. So there will be some factual errors. Having 20 something people out of 3 billion wrong is not that bad. Uh, but it just proves that you're working on a real data set, right? And you need to be careful about some outstanding data that might be not correct. Exactly. Basically, when you're working with a real data set, if your data set is perfect, don't trust it. There are no, every data set has cleanliness problems. And here we have an easy way to see, okay, there are, there are errors. At least the amount of errors is small. I can look for who these 24 people are using my two tables that I just created. Uh, I have some names. I can look for any one of these. For example, Doug Martindale. That here we have the link with Google. If you Google for him, yeah, the knowledge panel has the wrong date. Why? Because we extracted knowledge from Wikipedia. If we go to Wikipedia, you can see that someone typed his <laughs> age wrong. It happens. You have to learn to live with uh, data that might be wrong and how to clean it. Going back to my chart, uh, here we see how the age is distributed. It's also interesting to see peaks, like the baby boomers down there. There was a big generation. And now I'm wondering, OK, this is the age distribution. How about the gender distribution within these ages? New SQL query. I will run the same query, but now looking by gender. And you can see the distribution, how at every age, there are almost more males than females. There are many ways to visualize data. Um, here, I can't see very clearly what the percentage is. I know there is a difference, but I can do a new chart that focuses on that question. What's the percentage of women for each age? Same chart. Now you can see that until people are 18 years old, the gender balance is in the middle, 50-50. And there is a big dip here. Uh, I was looking at the data on why, and it's basically because everyone in the United States, when they join the college, uh, they join a football team. That team gets inside the, our database, and there's a big number of males coming into sports. But then it balances out, and it gets uh, worse as time happens. There is a difference there. Um, you can go deeper on that. And, but let's look at a different dimension, professions. 
how does the gender balance vary within professions? We know that we have a different representation here. Uh, we have a lot of uh, data from movies. So let's look first at what are the top 25 professions in Wikipedia. Here we have the top 25 professions. Clearly, there are a lot more actors than anything else, uh, than singers, politicians, screenwriters, etc. Uh, it's basically what this database is. I can do the same division here to see how our professions divided by gender. And here you have almost every pro profession is male dominated. We can look at the percentage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> here, you, if you visualize it this way, it's clear that model has more than 50% and every other profession not. Uh, singer is close. Uh, of course, American football player, we have a lot of them, but very few are women, if any. Um, let, we can focus on verticals, and you can start seeing very interesting information. For example, yeah, singers are almost 50% women, but the percentage gets much lower on related professions, like musicians or composers. Why? I have no idea. But it's, it's an interesting thing to I investigate more. So this uh, gender gap that we're seeing in computer science, it's happening in other places, and it would be very interesting to find the root causes. Other verticals, like writing. Uh, novelists has a much more female representation than poets or screenwriters. So if you ever wonder why movies are so gender-based, Part of this is, well, who are the screenwriters? Um, but there are more dimensions we can investigate this. Are we looking only at United States? Are we looking at different countries? Let's see what happens around the world. Here, I'm adding this dimension, the birthplace, the place of birth. And I will look at specifically at writer. And I'm ordering by which places have the best balance. So for example, writers by birthplace, how many, how the percentage of females, these places have a much better representation and sometimes it's more than 50%. Australia is a is big one, Melbourne too. You might notice here that I'm mixing some data, like I have countries and states and cities. We will see why. Same thing with politicians. Uh, Norway has a very big representation of politicians, uh, as Helsinki. And even some countries, uh, some places in India, where females are, we've seen a lot of problems on how Indians treat females. But it's good to see that, at least in the politicians, as we saw before also in the, day, in the specific examples of the Gandhis, there is a better balance there. But as we are talking about how things are in the world, uh, there are better ways to visualize this than charts. And I have here Eva. She will, can you help me visualize this? Absolutely. I totally believe in visualization. So we're going to talk about data visualization. Queries were interesting. Charts were even more interesting. But actually, sometimes you just want to take a broad overview. Uh, of your data, especially if you're not very familiar with your data source at the beginning. With the data that Felipe extracted with all those queries you saw in the presentation, uh, we prepared a demo for you. You can find it at this address, devnook.github.io slash gender maps. And um, in this demo, I just plot the data from Freebase crunched by BigQuery into the Google map to draw some general conclusions. Let's have a look. That's how it looks like. Here in the sidebar, I have uh, those 25 most popular professions listed. And here on the map, I plot uh, this data. For example, let's take musicians. Here's the scale. So you can see the more blue the color is, the more male participants in a given profession in a given country. And the more red it is, uh, the more female participants in a given country. And the intensity of the color just shows how much data uh, we have about given country. So even 
given this one example uh, about musician or any other actually that you pick, you can immediately see some of the properties of your data set. For example, you can see that, oh yeah, on this screen, Africa almost does not exist, right? This tells you that this data set has much um, underestimated representation in some areas of the world, and some other areas are overrepresented, like for example, Western Europe or, um, or Americas. Uh, this makes you more careful about drawing conclusions. So it's good to, to draw something on the map because you can figure out uh, when you're drawing the conclusions that your data set has some properties you need to be aware of. Maybe your data set is not describing gender gap globally, but in some particular regions more than in overall global situation. Uh, the other interesting thing that you can immediately see is that there are regional differences. Let's look into Singer, for example. You can see that there are, this is, this is a, a, a kind of profession that is much more, uh, has much bigger female representation than male representation, but still there are differences in different regions. I hope we have politician here, yeah? You can see that Norway is standing out and that Australia is standing out. Uh, in, a, in a more red color uh, than the blue color. So just by playing around with this data, you can see that there are regional differences and where do they come from. I like the example of the voice actor, because you can see that, for example, um, uh, UK is really male dominated, similar for Americas, but then Japan is very female uh, dominated. Do you know why? Any guesses? Anime, yeah, that's right. There is, there is, and there is, it's very strong color as well, at least on this screen, on that one maybe. Well, it still stands out over there because anime is so, pop so popular. Uh, in Japan, you have much more voice actors than anywhere else. So this gives you a, a nice way of, of playing with data and finding some weird uh, characteristics. If you would take into account more than 25 top professions, you can find really odd things. For example, you can learn that China has only one famous uh, hockey players team that is all female, for example, right? So you can find really weird data that you wouldn't think of looking into uh, if you were just basing your information on, on charts uh, or on raw queries. So now I'm going to explain shortly how, how it was done. Uh, this feature in Maps was released uh, quite recently. I think it was like four or five weeks ago. So it's brand new and it's pretty cool in my opinion. I really like playing with it. Um, in, in this demo, I, I'm joining two different data sets. One is the countries because I want to draw countries over the map. And the other data source is what Felipe gave me about the uh, gender stats from uh, BigQuery. Countries data sets are easily available on the internet. I'm using the one published by naturalearthdata.com and then I just use a small script to annotate it with the gender data uh, I got from Felipe. And the outcome of this uh, annotation is the GeoJSON file. GeoJSON is a format that is pretty much the same as JSON, just contains some geolocated data. And Maps have this uh, utility called data uh, at GeoJSON that if your data is already encoded in GeoJSON, with this one line of code, you just put an overlay over your map and it just draws all the data for you. So this is pretty, uh, pretty cool functionality. There are some issues with processing uh, geolocated data that I would like you to be aware of. First of all, geolocated data can have different level of granularity, right? When it comes to place of birth, we can be talking about countries, cities, states and so on. So before processing this data, you always need to make sure to, um, to geolocate it and to normalize it to some common ground. In, in this example, I'm always normalizing to the, to the country level. Uh, other thing to remember is that countries differ uh, by, by size and by population. So sometimes, it, depending on the type of analysis, it might be more meaningful uh, to uh, analyze your data by comparison to the relative population rather than in absolute numbers. 
So this showed you the, the shortly the whole process that we went through uh, when preparing these analyses. We told you about the data source that is the Freebase, the way of data crunching you can do in, uh, in, in BigQuery, and the visualization of the data that you can do uh, through GeoJSON in the maps. But the question is wh where this all is going? Can we draw any conclusions for the future? Good question. Uh, if you want to see use any of these maps, they are all open sourced on Eva's account, so check it on GitHub. And let's look at this data from uh, other viewpoint, how things are changing during time. Uh, the picture today is not the best picture, but we can look at how things are changing. For example, we can focus, instead of in, in everyone, only in people between 40 and 50 years old, people that were born 40 years ago. And you see a balance very similar to the one we saw before. Then we can ask the same question with younger people, people that were born between 20 and 30 years ago. And we can take both charts and compare them and see that, yes, there is a difference. There is a change. Um, there is a bigger percentage of models, yes, but there's also a much bigger percentage of coaches. And coaches are our role models uh, where everything starts, so that's a beautiful number. Not only coaches, uh, business persons, songwriters, uh, there are much more professions above the 50% balance. So at least we can say things are changing. Uh, soccer players went the other way, and, it's, and I don't have here lawyers, but lawyers went the other way, but yes. Uh, things are changing, things are getting to a different place as time passes. So yes, we are almost done, but we have something prepared for you today. Just to make a quick summary for that, you should know now what Freebase is, you should know now what BigQuery is, uh, how to visualize this data on maps. I want you to try the same stuff, but before leaving, since we have some minutes left, do you want to build a map no one has seen before? Someone? Yes? Yes, I want a yes. Okay, I have, I have some yes. Let's build this. This No one has this, seen this map before. This data was not available before because it didn't exist. This map was not available before because Eva wrote it this morning. So let me go step by step if you want to follow me. Let's see. Let's start here with a very simple query. Um, let me load the query again. Yes, Oliver. So I, I hope you still remember this little file that we were downloading from Wikipedia. It had data from uh, 2 p.m. GMT time, so it's very fresh data. Uh, what we're going to do, do now, we're going to run some uh, queries on the Freebase table that uh, Felipe prepared beforehand, and then we'll be joining it with the page views. Exactly. So the first question is, where do we get the page views? You already saw where I got them. Let's look at that data in BigQuery. This is a very simple select. Let's look at page views for Pausini in Wikipedia. Someone knows this person? Yeah, you know that. When I was little, she was very famous in Chile, too. Uh, so yes, in, during that hour, some a couple of days ago, she had 31 page views in the English Wikipedia, 30 in the Spanish Wikipedia, 24 in the Italian one, etc. So we can use this data and we want to join it with the Freebase data we also have. So what I want to do now is to visualize for every country who is the most famous woman, woman for, that, for a specific hour. And I have most queries written here, but I go on to go through them with you. So if you want to get from Wikipedia all the females, a list of all the women there, you just look for the right gender. And here they are. This doesn't mean much, but these are the ideas that you have in Freebase. I can go to freebase.com and ask to for who is this? Uh, yes, that's Catherine Cochrane. That I don't know her, but I could, <laughs> I could learn more about her here. She's married to Alexander Stewart, the sixth Earl of Galloway. 
so she was born in mil in 1700. Um, let's try to uh, get more information here. So to join both data sets, I want to go from that weird ID to the Wikipedia page title. And I can do that very simply with this query. I will, I'm getting here the, the Wikipedia ID, and I'm running a regular expression to remove the Wikipedia ID, and now I have who each person is on Wikipedia. We have two Dorothea Langes, Kim Hunter. There are some lowercase issues, but let's skip that for now. Next question I have here is how many page views each one has? So to that query, I can add the sum of the requests, because there are many Wikipedias. I can join by the title, the, and I can group by each person. Let's see what do we have here. Ba -bum, ba -bum. Here I have. Liu Zhang had three page views during this hour. Liu Jifei, and I have, this is just example. Liv Tyler have two, 247, et cetera. I still need more data. I can, I can even rank them by the page use, so I can order by count just to see if this data makes any sense. Ba -ba -da -ba -bam. Yes, so Julia Dreyfus was the one that had the most page views, followed by Shakira, Scarlett Johansson, Katy Perry. Where were each of them born? Let's keep writing queries. I will add the place of birth for them, joining it with the previous table I had created, the place of birth for each person. Let me see. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. Run a query. Oh, no. Order by count. That this will be a big query. Thank you. <laughs> um, let me abandon it. But yes, well, I got it anyway. Uh, <laughs> I have 3,000, and I didn't order by descending, so the last page is more interesting than the first one. Shakira, and she was born here. Still, that's a free base ID. I want to translate it. Uh, let me translate it. R put the name here. Will this work? Um, how does this work now? Uh, oh, it's, I can run it here, I can run it here. Let me see what do I get. Yes, Julia Dreyfus was born in New York City, Shakira was born in Barranquilla, and again, I have a problem that I want them by country. So I can do another join that goes from the specific area to where they are contained. So let's translate this to country, country name. They have an ISO code. Let's count. Will this work? Will this not work? So basically, I'm building a very complicated query step by step. Here I have Julia Dreyfus that was born in the USA, Shakira in Colombia, Scarlett Johansson, and a lot more that were born in the United States. Anybody knows the SQL to get the first one for each country? There is a very useful function to order by. But I get the first one, I, then I would get only Julia Dreyfus. Analytic functions, yes. T-shirt. T-shirt. <laughs> Excellent. Um, let me show you how an analytic function works. Here, I will run them. <laughs> okay, thank you for that one. He, you have been watching this. Thank you for paying attention. I'll have the rank. I will partition by the ease of each country, and I will order by the count. Basically, this will give me an extra number that will rank each country, each person in each country uh, now I have Heidi Lamar for, which country is this, Australia? Yeah. Austria, thank you very much. 
And now I have them ranked. For example, IDN. Who knows who? Uh, hmm? Yes. Well, yes. But so here I have. This was the first one, first one, second one, third one. I only want the first one, so I will take the same query. I will uh, take the same data, and at the end I will add that I only want the one that is ranked number one. Let me see this. Do I get? Yes. So now I have for each country who, which woman was the most, the one with the most pages. Uh, do you know that Emma Watson was born in France? Do I have Italy here? Did I skip Italy? Oh, here's Italy. Francesca Chavone. Chiavone. Chiavone. Thank you very much. She was. But now I pro I'm not doing this with fresh data. I'm cheating a little because I'm using data from two days ago. Just, but as you know, I loaded the latest data. 40 minutes ago, so this information changes. Let's see who do we have now. Um, where do I have the page counts? I want them for April 12th at 2 p.m. GMT. I said two, that's the freshest data. We are looking at what is happening right now in the world, how things are changing. This list is different now. Will it run? Yeah, it ran. It's only 10 seconds, 60 gigabyte processor. Uh, John Fontaine is the most uh, visited woman in the last hour. Emma Stone, Shakira is still there. Let me find it for Italy. Amy Adams. It keeps changing. And, and it's, yes, Amy Adams was born in Italy. Now you know. <laughs> <laughs> and Avery Lavigne in Canada. And basically, what we really want to do here is look at this data in a map. So let's ask for Eva's help. I will extract this data. I will download it as CSV. Now it's in my computer. I want to, I want to show it in Finder. I want to open with a text edit. Here I have the complete list. That's an old list. And Eva. Yeah, so I prepared a map that you can actually download this data quite easily too. I hope it will work. Although it's a demo, so you know how demos work when you demo them live. Let's see what happens. Uh, that was the gender maps one. And under the URL map labels, you can see the demo for, for the other one. It's also open source, so you can just have a look how it's done. And if I put the data here, it plots on a map. And this way, you got a map that nobody ever seen before, because it's from data from one hour ago. <laughs> Amy Adams. Um, that is our talk. Thank you, Eva. She wrote this map this morning, so I'm very, very happy about having it. Yes. If you like this talk, please rate it. And if you don't like it, rate it and tell us why, because we want to improve as much as possible. Um, yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Questions? We have some minutes. We have even 10 minutes for questions. Yes, sir. Uh, it's based on the data set. So you have a, a table. And this is special about BigQuery. BigQuery uses no indexes. Every time you run a query, it's a full table scan. Uh, it's smarter than that. It's a very fast full table scan, as you just saw. Uh, so you don't have to worry about indexes anymore. They don't use any space. So what BigQuery does is it looks at every column you are naming your table. And it sums the values. Like this column is 5 gigabytes. This column is 3 kilobytes. Uh, it adds those values and charges you based on that. That's why I also extract data as much as I can. So instead of going through a huge da da table that has a lot of information I don't care about, 
I first extract the data I'm interested in, and then run the query. For the microphone, the question was how microphone, how microphone, uh, how BigQuery looks at charges per data. The other good news here is that it doesn't charge per hour or anything like that. It's just if you run a query, you get charged for that query and nothing else. Mm So yes. So the question is, okay. Yeah. So so to re if if I understand the question correctly, um, you're asking if the fact that the data is taken from internet from particular sources uh, is influencing what results we're seeing, how big this gender gap appears, right? Um, so absolutely yes. The data is taken uh, mostly from Wikipedia. It means that not every person ends up on Wikipedia on average, right? It's only about famous people. So that's why we call it a notability gender gap, because only notable people kind of end up in this data set. In Freebase, apart from Wikipedia, we also take data from uh, cultural data sets, like uh, from IMDb for movies, uh, for actors, uh, for uh, from the uh, different label producers for musicians and for for songwriters so yes this data is skewed that's why we like to think about it not as a full analysis it's rather as a place where you can start asking questions and explore data further it's just a teaser to get to the real data afterwards just, just a moment uh, is BigQuery suitable for doing graph processing? You have filtered your, uh, your, your graph, but it's possible in a, in a good time transfer a graph like this one that you have? Or? So th the question is, is BigQuery a graph database? Uh, the answer is n it's not a graph database. Here I'm just, uh, Freebase has a graph database associated with it. Uh, what's the name? RDF, well, uh, yeah, you have the tools to explore graphs, but with no, normally with graph databases, I'm able to navigate graph very fast, but not to get aggregated numbers. So here I'm extending the power of query to do analysis, uh, aggregated data analysis. Thank you for. Yes, sir. Okay, so the question is how can I load data into BigQuery? Uh, in this case, yes, I use the command line, but I could have also come here and tell them that I want to, so for example, I want to create a new table. I just can do it on the web. This is for uh, small data, and I didn't want to do it here. We have some Wi-Fi problems, but Yes, the simplest way is just do it on the web. The simple way I did it just ri right now was from the command line. And, but you can also automate it with the API, um, one of the most powerful ways we have to get data into BigQuery now is just streaming the 100,000 rows per second from different devices. Uh, we have a very nice demo how we were doing that with power meters in the whole city of Seattle for last I.O. Uh, the, another very interesting way to get data into, uh, into BigQuery is data ju that just get in from different places. For example, you must all know or might know Google Analytics. Uh, you use the Google Analytics. Uh, today, premium partners of Google Analytics can get all their data into BigQuery just automatically. So if, if you have a sign contract with Google, you can find all your data into BigQuery 
and join it with your own CRM. You can start understanding things at a different scale. Yes. So do we have other uh, services for NoSQL? Yes. We have the data store. That is a very NoSQL database. It has no SQL querying like this one. And it's much faster when you want to do key-based things. Like here in BigQuery, everything is a full table scan. So it makes analysis very fast. But when you want to work with data by key, then a data store is the best place. And it all depends on what you are doing. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why did I put a graph in BigQuery and not in a NoSQL database? Uh, because if I had to do the same analysis on a NoSQL database, I would have to run map reducers that go record by record going through the graph, and that might take more than 15 seconds. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, in this case, this is faster, and basically we we at Google, I didn't invent any of these things, but we at Google invented uh, MapReduce yeah. many years ago, and this is based in Dremel. We we have both papers, MapReduce, you can look at it, and Dremel was, is a much more recent technology, and we are using Dremel, that's what powers the query, because it's much faster to run this kind of analysis. Yes. So it's also important. Yeah, exactly. It's important to say that uh, you, we write queries in SQL because that's what people are familiar with. It's, it's the syntax for the query. But what runs behind the scenes is not a relational database at all. Thank you, Antonella. <laughs> yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay, last question. So, sorry. Uh, we can talk later. Is free based multilingual? Uh, it's, it's mostly based in English language. Uh, a lot of topics have translations in other languages, and because it's a graph database, like one topic is represented as one entity and then can have like different representations in different languages. But the coverage of other languages is much smaller than English. And so is translation are automatic translation by Wikipedia or from Wikipedia and from external sources? Thank you very much. Grazie mille. I'll see you around. Thank you. Bye.